Hey everybody, it's Tammy from Wisconsin and it's Friday. And tonight we're going to talk about the football preseason is winding down, right? Last night was the Packers' last game of the preseason and it got me to thinking because I, you know, I'm the type of person, football fan actually, that I can't get enough of football. I start reading the articles as soon as they start mini camps and I'm watching them and I watch in detail and read everything about what's going on in the preseason. And by following all that stuff, I, could, I get to know the players to a certain extent, as much as you can from reading them on, in the paper. And most years, you know, they start out with, and I think right now they have like 90 guys or whatever it is, and they have to get down by 53 soon. So it's, it's a tough time for a coach and a player. And I get to thinking about what it is like to be a coach while football preseason is, preseason is coming to end. And I heard Mike McCarthy talk yesterday about how it's really the toughest re weekend for him. You know, you can you imagine, you know, you've um, been with these guys for weeks. You know, some of these, the rookies anyways, they're in there for rookie camp. And, you know, then they have the mini camps for them and stuff like that. So it's been months. And then pretty much you're, he's got to fire some guys this weekend. And, and how that, how tough that is, that must be for a coach to, you know, especially since you, you get to know these people and their family and you know that, you know, it's not just a game anymore. This is their life. It's their living. And you're, you know, you're always concerned about the people that you're with, you know, and, and your team. And, you know, I remember when um, I was thinking about when I was in high school and if, you know, the coach has to deal with different players, you know, because you're talking about different levels of players. You've got the veterans, you've got the guys you drafted, which you have high hopes for, and then you've got the guys that are undrafted. You know, that uh, are just free agents hoping to make a team that they picked up that nobody else noticed. Or for whatever reason, these guys are in in uh, preseason football with. And, and you wonder how the coach handles all different levels. You know, are the veterans expected more out of? You know, certainly they have to know more. They know the plays. They've been around for a while. And yet, on the other hand, is a veteran um, put out less effort because he knows he's made the team before? You know, did, did they have that type of attitude? You know, they're pros, you know, so you would think not. And, and it got to me to thinking, like I said, about when I was in high school. I played high school basketball and volleyball and ran track, but basketball was my sport. I actually made the team when I was a freshman. And back then, aging myself again, you didn't have JV and you didn't have freshman team. You have one team for women's basketball. So to make the team as a freshman, you know, they had 15 players on the team. That was a big deal. Not that I got to play at all. I mean, I think the only time we went in is if we were out by a bazillion points and you might have got in for like five minutes at the end of the game. Pretty much think they cooked, kept us around just like the pro football team keeps the practice squad around. It's so like, okay, these guys might develop into good players. But uh, it helps to have them around. So, um, but I remember, you know, freshman year, you're okay with not playing your freshman, right? In sophomore year, junior year, you get in there a little more time. And pretty much the whole team as varsity players are seniors. And you expect to be starting when you're a senior. So my senior year, um, during the um, preseason when we were still going through tryouts, I got sick. I, I um uh, I missed a couple of days of school and missed um, the tri a couple of days of tryouts. And really, you only have a few days of tryouts, maybe a week. You know, so, and I didn't pay attention to the bulletin board when the first cuts came out because I figured, well, senior, I've been on the team for years. Of course, I'm going to make it. And then one of my friends says, hey, did you look at the sheet? And I'm like, well, no, why? And she says, well, you know, you're listed as maybe on there. I'm like, seriously? How could that happen? I'm a senior. I've been on the team for how long? But it, when I, I thought about it, I mean, obviously I'd slapped off. I wasn't trying hard. I missed practices. I would have never missed a tryout, you know, in any of the other years. But I assumed I was making the team, so it wasn't important for me to be there, even if I was sick. So I definitely, you know, went on my hands and knees to the coach, said, you know, told her I was sick. That's why I was missing the tryouts. And, you know, I worked my butt off then before the final cuts. And I made the team. You know, I think part of the reason the coach put my name on the maybes was to shock everybody because maybe all the seniors were slacking. So do veterans slack when they come into preseason? Or you've heard stories about how, you know, some of the veterans like, well, Brett Favre, <laughs> he didn't show up 
even show up for preseason the last couple of years. It was beyond him. He was too good. And that's a whole other story. I don't want to get into Brett Favre because it's, he leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. But anywho, so you got the veterans and then you got the guys that are drafted where you have high expectations of them. So it's a pressure on them. And then you have the guys that um, were undrafted and kind of like walk-ons, you know, and then their pressure on is just to show that, you know, it was a mistake that they didn't get drafted. You know, so it's it's a tough time for the coach dealing with all these different players. And it reminded me of being a coach on our team. Obviously, we don't do cuts. You know, but we we do when people join our team. They're at all different levels. They might have done um, internet stuff before. They might come in here totally green. You know, so we have to deal with everybody's lack of or level of expertise and and fit our program to them. And maybe that's what the pro football coaches do. But then from a player's perspective, which is you know I know I know a lot about that because our kids um, played football. You know, they both started in youth football. Steph started in fifth grade. Griff started in sixth grade. And I remember the first time they were practicing, you know, you don't get cut from youth football. But, geez, they had the helmets on and, you know, they looked like bobblehead dolls out there. Just like they, their necks weren't strong enough to even hold up those helmets. But they had a lot to learn. And both of them had really great coaches when they were in youth football, so it, it helped out a lot. But by the time they got to high school, they were ready to compete for a job. Youth football, everybody gets to play. You know, you play different positions, see what you're good at. You know, by the time you get to high school, you want that job. You don't want that job because you're the coach's son, which we how many of us seen so often. But uh, both our sons were quarterbacks when they were freshmen. Steph played quarterback all through high school. And Griff... Um, was switched over to a running back his sophomore year. So they really were in the thick of things and, and loved the competition as players. But it's still high school ball. And, you know, our like I said, our oldest them played uh, college ball, and it's a whole different thing. I mean, and I remember, you know, when he first started playing running back in, uh, the first time he got landed on when he was a sophomore in in their uh, scrimmage they had with one of the teams from Milwaukee, and it was big, huge, 300-pound lineman, and I thought he was going to be dead, and he bounces up out of that pile and runs away, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be hard as a parent. And then when he got to college, the guys are twice as big, and the game is so much more faster, and it was a huge thing. You know, you know, people might think playing a sport in, in college is, you know, you have this stereotype of, you know, other people doing your homework and uh, not having to show up for classes. That's just not true. Um, it was it was like going to school and having a full-time job. You know, early morning practices, early morning workouts. You had school classes all day long. You had workouts after, after class, over dinner, you know, working out after that. And then you had time to study. So it, it was a challenge. It was huge. So you imagine all these guys players that are fighting to make the roster now for the Packers. You know, and they've worked so hard for so many years. Tomorrow, it might be all over. You know, so every year I think, what happens to some of these guys? Some of them you see show up on another team. A lot of Packers, because the Packers have been a good team for many years. Um, but, you know, some of them you just never hear of again. But it always, I always think of the story that Charles Woodson talks about how um, when he first came to the Packers. And if you don't know who Charles Woodson is, you know, you might want to Google him or something. But sh short story, uh, he, was, uh, he was a defensive back. He was a Heisman tro Trophy winner. He played for the Raiders, had a tough time playing for the Raiders um, on and off the field. He had a lot of challenges. And so they ended up trading him. And he ended up in, in Wisconsin, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Imagine the difference between L.A. and Green Bay. I mean, it's a huge culture shock. And he just felt like he was at the, the end of his career. You know, he ended up in cold Green Bay versus, you know, beautiful California. You know, the whole thing. And he said he was sitting in his car outside the stadium during football preseason the first day. And he's actually weeping. I mean, he said he just started crying. He's like, how the heck did I end up here? And pretty soon he heard a little tap, tap, tap on his window. And he turned and he saw this little old couple and he opened up his window and he thought, well, you know, what are they saying to me, you know? And he said they had no idea who he was. They, they didn't know he was Charles Woodsman, Heisman Trophy winner. They didn't know he was a Green Bay Packer, nothing. 
And when he rolled down his window, all they did is ask him, are you okay? Is there anything we can do to help you? And he's like, here I am in Green Bay in the middle of nowhere. And it's a little old couple. I'm a black man thinking, you know, they're going to call the cops on me or something. And these people didn't even think any of that. They didn't know who he was. You know, so it was just a matter of two people caring about another person and seeing this man alone in his car crying. He said, his, he said it just gave him shivers. He said right then he knew he was in the right place at the right time. And his life did turn around. He, he turned around his game. He cleaned up his off the field stuff. You know, the next year they, you know, went to the Super Bowl. He's got a Super Bowl ring. And of course, now this last year, the Packers, you know, he ended up going back to LA, but he had a lot of good years with the Packers that he would have never had, never thought he could have. And it all started with two people just showing him that he cared. And that's how we look at our team too. You know, you, you join our team and we're not your coach and yet we are. You know, we're here to support you. You're our partner. We lock arms with you and we care about you. And we'll be the ones tapping on your window if we see that you're having a challenge. Know that we're here for you. And that, that's why I love that story by Charles because it just gives you hope that, you know, pe there's good people out there everywhere and there's always the right place and the right time. And that's where we're here for you tonight. So, football season. Fun on Friday, football preseason pre done for us, anyways, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, a week before the season starts, and we're all excited here, so I, I thought I'd end up with a joke tonight. So, why did the Packer, did you hear about the Packer fan who died in the pie-eating contest? You know what the answer is? How he died? The cow kicked him in the head. So that's it for today. Have a great night and everybody have a great holiday weekend. Talk to you later.